Okay, in this video, we're going to go ahead and do 11.3. So for number one, I have the vector u to 11. I have the vector v, um, negative 5, 2. And they are asking us for five different things in this one. So let's do part A first. That is the dot product of u and v. So that's going to be the dot product of 211 and negative 5, 2. And so from the lecture slides, we learned the formula for finding dot products. And that's essentially the first components multiplied together plus the second components multiplied together. And so we end up with a positive 12 there. Okay. Um, now we're going to do the dot product of u and itself kind of like a square, but not exactly. So 211 and 211, we get 4 and 121, which is 125. And then for V, we're getting the magnitude of V squared. So essentially what that is, is you're gonna take the magnitude of V and then you're going to square it. So that's negative five squared plus two squared, and that equals 25 plus four. And the house and the square undo each other. So you just get 29. Um, if you notice, there's no square root and it's just the first component squared plus the second component squared. And when we did the dot product with itself for u, we ended up with the same result, the first component squared plus the second component squared. So that's just one thing to notice um, is that v dot with v actually equals the same thing as the magnitude of v squared, okay? It's just an observation that you do get the same result. Um, let me turn on my camera because this page does seem a little bit dark. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so D is going to be um, a little bit more complicated. So we've got U dot V and then this multiplication here. So we do have to do what's in the parentheses first. So we do have to do U dot V, which we have already done. And we found that it was 12. And we do have to multiply that by V. And so we end up with negative 60 and 24. So here I am going to put in my vector. And I'm going to write negative 60 comma 24 and close out. And then finally, we can work on E. And we have u with the dot product of 3v. So you do have to do what's in the parentheses first. So if I do 3 times v, I'm going to have 211 dot product with negative 15 and 6, which means I will get negative 30 plus 66, which means I will get 36 as the final answer there. Oops, there we go. Okay, moving on. We have another problem like that. Um, the only difference for number two, I will go ahead and work through it. Um, the only difference is that this is a vector in space versus the vector in the plane for number one. Difference is two dimensions versus three dimensions. But computationally, it's literally the same thing. The only um, difference is that you will have a third component to factor in, um, in your computations. So I'm gonna get started on this one, u dot v. So we have this vector and a dot product with the other vector. So we get the first two components multiplied, which is zero. Second components, we get negative 18. And then the last components, we get 20. And all together, that sum is two. OK. Then for part B, we have the u dot u. 
So that is four negative two five dot product with itself. And so then we get 16 plus four plus 25, which is 45. And then part C is to do the magnitude of V squared. Um, so we're gonna do the square root of all of the V components squared. But then I've got to square this result because of that square right there. So the house will pop off and I'll end up with 0, 81, and 16. And so I end up with 97. For part D, we have u dot v and then multiplied by the vector v. So we end up with um, 4. Actually, I already did u dot v and I got 2. So I already know exactly what I'm going to have in that parentheses. It's going to be 2 times the v vector. So we end up with 0, 18, and 8. And then finally, the last one, we have u dot with 3v. So u is 4, negative 2, 5. And then we've got to do 3 times v. So we end up with... Oops. That comma turned into a whole parenthesis. <laughs> so we get 27 and 12, which means we get 0 plus negative 54 plus 60, and that gives me a 6. And so just bear with me, I'm going to type these values in here. Oops, I did not type them in there. And then six. Okay, moving on. Um, very similar. Only difference here for number three is that um, I'm not going to do all the computations. I'm just going to do one thing, and then I will leave you to complete the rest of the problem since you do have an example. And that example would be number two to complete the rest of it, okay? All I'm going to do is turn this into a problem that works very much like example two. So this is in its um, vector form, okay? In the unit vector form. All I'm going to do is turn it into its um, component form. And then you can do the problem exactly the way you did number two. Okay, so once you put it in its component form, you should be able to compute all of these values just like you did with, or just like I did with number two. Okay, and so if you complete number two, you should also be able to complete number three. I'm gonna move on just for the sake of saving time in the video, right? Okay, this is different, number four. I'm going to put to be continued because that is not a finished problem, right? Okay, so for number four, we have this. And V, we have this. Okay, since it is asking us for the angle between the two vectors, we do have to use our formula for the angle between two vectors. And that is this formula. Okay, so there is a multiplication in here, but we don't want to use the dot symbol because the dot represents um, a dot product. So uh, typically, if you want to, you can put these in parentheses to let them know that they're multiplied together. Um, but if they are written right next to each other, they are multiplied together. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the dot product of UV. So 4 times 8 is 32 plus 4 times negative 8, which is negative 32. 
And then for the magnitude of u, it would be the square root of 16 plus 16, which is 32. And for v, it would be the square root of 64 plus 64, which is 128. So you do end up with zero over the square root of 4096, which just for computing purposes, I'm gonna go follow this out, is zero over 64, but ideally zero over anything. It could have been determined way back here that this was just gonna be the value zero. Now, if I wanna figure out what the cosine of theta equals zero means for the angle, I'm going to do cosine inverse of this zero. Okay, and so then I will get two answers. It just depends on what mode your calculator is in. And it looks like according to the homework, they want both radians and degrees. So since they want radians first, I'm gonna to go to my mode and make sure that I'm in radian mode and I'm gonna hit enter. Now it highlights the radian and so I'm gonna hit second and quit. And then I'm gonna type in cosine inverse. So I have to hit the cosine button two times. And then it pops up the inverse. I'm gonna hit in zero, close that parentheses. And I get about, um, it doesn't tell me what to round to. So let's see, it does give me, if I hit the double arrow, it does give me the exact value and it's pi over two radians. Okay, now if I want it to give me the answer in degrees, I'm gonna go back to mode highlight degrees, and then second, quit. And then I'm gonna go cosine twice, zero parentheses, and hit enter. And it is 90 degrees, okay? So it's the same answer, it's just the mode in which the answer is given. So for here, we're gonna type in a fraction. And if I type in pi, notice that it changes it to pi. So you don't necessarily have to go look for it in the symbols category. You can just type in the, the, the letters P, I, spelling out the word pi, and it automatically changes it to a pi. And since I already have my degree symbol here, I don't need to include it inside the box. Okay, moving on, number five. Number five is very similar. This problem just happens to have um, three components instead of the two. So let me line up my page correctly, there we go. So number five, and we have u is equal to, and I'm gonna put this, oh no, it does have two components still. No, it doesn't, it has a j. j is the third dimension, okay? So i is like the x values. Um, no, I'm sorry, k is the third dimension. So I is like the X values, J is like the Y values, and then K is like the Z value. So if you do see K's in there, you do need to know that that means it's three dimensions. But because I don't see any K's in this um, unit vector form, it is very similar to the previous problem. But they are different, so I am gonna work this one out. So I do have positive I for the first component and positive one for the second component. And for the second vector, I have negative four for the first component and six for the second component. And so I'm gonna follow that same formula as before. So u dot v over the magnitude of five one and the magnitude of negative four six. So I multiply the first components plus multiply the second components. Then I'm gonna take the square root of 25 plus one, which is 26, and the square root of 16 plus 36 is 52. And so then here I get negative 14 over um, the square root of one, three, five, two. And I wanna see if my calculator will compute that. See, no, it won't. So just a hint and of advisement, instead of multiplying these two together, 
try to simplify them first, and then you can um, work from there. So the square root of 26 does not reduce, and the square root of 52 does reduce. So that's going to be 2 square root of 13. So 2 square root and then 26 times 13 insides with insides. As soon as the inside becomes 1,000, it won't, or I think anything over 500, it won't calculate. OK, so let's keep going. Um, the 2 and the negative 14 will reduce. And then let's see if we can do the square root of 338. It does. It's saying it's 13 square root of 2. So we did reduce this 2 with this 14. OK, now 7 and 13 do not reduce. So this is what I have so far. OK, um, so this whole string just basically tells me that the cosine of the angle is negative 7 over 13 square root of 2. So if I want to figure out what theta is, I'm going to do the cosine inverse of this value. And remember, I don't think this one's going to be exact. So I'm going to put a squiggly, but it might be an exact answer. I don't know. Let's see. Cosine inverse, I am in degree mode. So I guess I'm going to find the degree answer first. So fraction negative 7 over 13 square root of 2. Get a little to the side and close that up. And I get about 102. It says round your answer for part B, which is degrees. Round your answer to one decimal place. So this would be 112.4 degrees. OK, now for the radian one. So I'm going to go mode, highlight radian, hit enter. Now that it's highlighted, I'm going to hit second quit. And I'm going to um, shortcut it. So I'm going to hit the up arrow to get to the last thing that I entered in the calculator. So instead of having to retype that whole thing, I just press the up key until I got to that entry. And then I'm going to hit enter to copy it. And then I'm going to hit enter again to actually compute it. And so for this problem, it actually wants me for part eight around to three decimal places. So then here it would be 1.961. And over here, 102.4 degrees. So this was 961 rads. Okay, moving on. Let's see what we got next. So for number six, we have that u is equal to the cosine of some angle. I am not going to do this problem because um, it's in black instead of in red, which means if I do this problem, I'm doing your problem for you. So I'm actually going to give you a similar problem. Um, instead of working out this one exactly, because I do want you guys to do that your own. So there's U and then here's B. And I'm gonna just do pi over four. So your answers in my next step are not gonna be exactly the same as mine. They might be similar, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but the first thing I like to do is put it in its component form. For me, for some reason, I prefer to deal with vectors in their component form versus their um, unit vector form. So for me, I'm just going to basically type in cosine of pi over 6, close that up, and see what that is. I get square root of 3 over 2. If you memorized your unit circle, this part might be a little bit faster for you. Um, but like I've mentioned before, after seeing so much math throughout a day, um, I really just, out of laziness, refer back to my calculator most times, okay? Um, and you are allowed to use this calculator on tests and things like that, so there's no harm um, in using it for these small computations. 
you should have taken a whole class on pre-cal, right? On how to find these values. So I'm just gonna believe that you know how the unit circle works and what it is, but you also know how to use your calculator to find these values. Okay, so these are the values that I found. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to find this angle between them. So I'm gonna do cosine theta of the dot product. So this one times this one, insides times insides means I get square root of six over two times two, which is four. Plus this is on the outside. So it's just square root of two because there's an invisible one here. One times that one is just another invisible one. But in the denominator, two times two is four. And then this is a little bit harder part. Um, I know what it's gonna come out to, but this is because of experience, okay? Um, but I need you guys to, um, I'll just say it frankly. These values are on the unit circle and the length of a angle on the unit circle is one unit. That's the whole point of why it's called the unit circle. So these values should come out to one because it's the length of the vector, right? And on a unit circle, the length of the vectors are one, but let's do it, okay? So if I square this, I'm gonna get three because a little house will pop off. If I square that, I get four. If I square one, I get one. If I square two, I get four. Now let's move on to the other square root. So if I square this, the house will come off. Two times two is four. Same thing with the other one. And then what do we get? Um, here you cannot combine the square root of six and the square root of two. They are not like radicals. So it does stay looking like that. Um, but here you get four over four, which is just one. And here you get four over four, which is also just one. So if this whole thing, this is one times one, which is just one, right? So you end up with this in the numerator and that in the denominator which means you can write the expression with just the numerator, okay? So as ugly as that looks, that is the value that we get. And if we wanna figure out what the angle is, we're gonna to have to do cosine inverse of this value. Okay, now I do believe my calculator was in radians last. So I'm gonna do cosine inverse fraction square root of six, get out of the house, plus square root of two, go downstairs, type in the four, close up my parentheses, and I get this for the number of radians. Now let me hit the double arrow and see if that's an exact value. It is, it is pi over 12, who would have thought, right? So pi over 12. Now, um, For the degrees, we're gonna to go to second mode. Oops, just mode, sorry. Enter for degree, second and quit, then go up to highlight that thing we entered. I really don't wanna enter that again, so I'm just gonna highlight it. And then I'm gonna hit enter to compute it. So I get this many radians or it's 15 degrees, okay? So here we're gonna type in fraction PI over 12. And down here, we're gonna type in 15. So far, so good. We're getting toward the end of the assignment. Fantastic, right? I think there are about 12 problems in this um, homework section. So now we have the fact that U is 45, the magnitude of U. The magnitude of V is 15, and we know that the angle between U and V is five pi over six. And so what they're asking you to do is use the alternate form of a dot product to find U dot V. Well, I don't remember that formula, but I do remember the angle formula, especially since we've just used it, right? And so if I want to solve for the numerator, you basically just multiply both sides by the denominator. 
And so we get that this is equivalent to that dot product, okay? So if I wanna figure out what this dot product is, I'm going to have to figure out what this expression is equivalent to, okay? So I do know the magnitude of U is 45. I do know the magnitude of V is 15. And I do know that the angle is five pi over six. So I'm just gonna type all of that into my calculator. Clear that out. I'm gonna type um, 45, 15, cosine of five pi over six. Close that up and hit enter. Oops, I'm in degree mode, but I typed in radians. So let me change my mode to radian mode, because if I enter that answer, it will count it wrong. So let me go highlight what I was entering again. And now that it's in radian mode, when I hit enter to compute, it will um, be a different value. So I get negative 584.5671476, right? And it probably keeps going. Um, this one does not ask me to round it to a particular value. So I'm wondering if they don't want that. Let me see. What is 45 times 15 is 675. They may just want 675 cosine of 5 pi over 6. Because I think it's cosine of 5 pi over six, that's the, the value that keeps going. Oh, look, it's this. So that might help me. I wonder if I would have done this and hit the double arrow. No, it didn't simplify it. So I am having to do this in pieces. So you can't simplify that in your calculator. So I would suggest multiplying these numbers together and then figuring out what this is. So it's going to be negative square root of three over two. And so you get negative 675 square root of three all over two. And they do want the exact answer because they're not giving you any decimals um, to choose from. So they do want this exact answer. So fraction key first. There it goes. Negative 675 five square root of three over two. Um, okay, number eight. Number eight is a little bit different. Number eight is about being parallel or perpendicular. Orthogonal is just another fancy vector word for perpendicular, okay? So are the two vectors going in the same direction or opposite directions, that would be parallel. Or is the angle between the two vectors 90 degrees? Then that would mean that they're per perpendicular or orthogonal, okay? And there's two quick ways to tell whether or not something is parallel. If one vector is a constant multiplier of another vector, then that means that they're parallel. And if their dot product is equal to zero, then we know that the angle will be 90 degrees. And so that is enough information to tell us that they are orthogonal or perpendicular. It's the same thing. Orthogonal just specifically refers to vectors, whereas perpendicular can refer to anything. Lines, geometric, space, uh, geometric shapes, vectors in space, anything, okay? Um, but or parallel or orthogonal. Um, and then neither is neither, of course, right? Um, that means that the angle between them is not zero and it's or not zero, 180 degrees or 90. Okay, that's essentially what that means. Okay, so let's check and see. Well, I'm first gonna put U in its component form. And I do see some Ks here. So these are three-dimensional um, vectors. So the I component is missing for you. So I'm gonna fill it in with a zero. I do have one J and a positive six K. And then for V, um, I do have one positive I, a negative three J and a negative one K. And so if you look at these, there is no number that I could multiply by here 
to get what I have for you or vice versa. And the best way to think about it is, is it doesn't matter what I multiply by zero, I'm never going to get one. Okay. Um, I can multiply one by negative three and get this, but if I also multiply this one by negative three, I do not get that value. So it has to be one number that if you multiply all three of these, you will get all three of these. Okay. So U does not equal a constant multiplier times V, which tells me that these two things are not parallel. Okay. Now we're going to go on to do the dot product. So u dot v, that would mean I multiply the first components, I multiply the second components, and then I multiply the last components. And I end up with negative nine, which does not equal zero. So that means these guys are not orthogonal. And if it's not parallel and it's not orthogonal, that means that it's neither. Okay, and so then in the computer, I will just select neither. Okay, now we do have another one, very similar to this one. Number nine. So I am gonna write these vectors. Um, it does have them in component form, but they have them using sines and cosines. So, um, they don't give me the angle, so I am going to have to just leave it as theta. Um, I thought I was going to be able to simplify it, but if they don't tell me what the angle is, I really can't. So we're just going to have to stick with these guys the way they are. Okay, now again, there's no number that I could multiply four by and get zero, or there is, but it's zero, and that constant multiplier is not supposed to be zero. Um, because if I multiply this by zero, I'm going to get zero, and it doesn't match. And if I multiply this by zero, I'm going to get zero. That also doesn't match, okay? So remember, it has to be the same constant for all three to get all three of these entries, um, and vice versa. There's nothing I can multiply by zero that will give me four, okay? So U is not a constant multiplier of V, which means these two are not parallel. But I do still need to verify whether or not they're orthogonal or not. If they are orthogonal, I'll click orthogonal. If they are not orthogonal to one another, then I will click neither, okay? But I definitely know I'm not clicking parallel for this particular problem. So let's go find their dot product. That means I would have to multiply the first components together. Then I would have to multiply the second components together. And then I would have to multiply the third components together and I'd get zero. And you have two terms of the same, one positive, one negative. So those will cancel and I will end up with the value zero, which does imply that these two are, are orthogonal orthogonal. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes I do have a problem with spelling, so I try. <laughs> Number 10, we have you. Oh, this one's a good one. This one is different. They're asking me about projections and vector components that are orthogonal to the UMB. So this one is really, really good. Um, it'll kind of lean us into the last two problems. Um, the, so we're starting off lightly with this projection formula and um, component, vector component orthogonal to V. Um, the only thing is, is that these, this problem is in two dimensions, okay, right? Notice that number 11 is in three dimensions. And I can't remember about number three or number 12, but we'll see it when we get there. Okay, so I do need to know the formula for a projection. So the projection of, um, of u on to v is this formula. Gosh, I hope I remember it right. I know it's u dot v and then v at the bottom magnitude and then, oh, and I need a square. And then v over here on the side. Okay, that looks good. So basically u dot v and then v dot with itself, right? And then this guy, this is what I'm saying. 
because we already established in an earlier problem that the magnitude of v squared is the same as v dot product v. Okay. The only thing is, is that you can't cancel the v's. And that's why they write it like this, because people think, oh, well, dot product, that's like multiplication. So let me just cancel these factors and I'll just get u over v. And then let me cancel these v's and I'll just get u. Dot products are not exactly the same as multiplication. Okay, so you can't do that, but they write it like this intentionally, so you're not inclined to do it. But for computational purposes, this is easier for me than this formula with this thing down here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and compute then. Um, U dot V would be 14 plus 36 over V dot with itself is 4 and 16. And then I'm going to put the V vector over here on the side. So I get, what is that, 50 over 20. So 5 over 2 times 2 and 4. So that gives me 5 and 10. And so that's what I get for the projection. Now, if I want to find the vector component, all I need to do is do u minus this projection vector. So sometimes you'll see this called as w1 and then this one called W2. And then they tell you to take notice that U is the same as W1 plus W2, which is why we're using subtraction to find W2. So if I minus W1 over, I'm minusing the projection over, I can figure out what um, W2 is. So U is seven and nine, and the projection is five and 10, so we end up with two and negative one. So here I'm gonna type in vector five comma 10. And down here, I'm gonna choose the vector um, two comma negative one. And that should be that. So number 11 is very similar. Number 11 just has three components instead of two components. So you've got U equal to two, negative one, negative three. You've got V equal to five, negative nine and four. And so then if I wanna find W1 or the projection of V onto U, we're going to figure out that that's the dot product of these two. So 10 plus positive nine, I don't need the parentheses then, I saw a negative thinking I was going to need a parentheses, but there's another negative. And then the last components multiply together. All over V with itself. So 25, 81, and 16. And then this all multiplied by V. So we end up with what fraction here? 10 plus 9 minus 12 is seven and then 25 plus, oops, plus 81 plus 16 is 122. Those do not reduce. At least I don't think they do. No, they do not. Uh, now I'm just gonna multiply that with everyone. So I get 35 over 122. I get negative 63 over 122 and I get 28 over 122. Now I do think that the 28 over 122 does reduce. Negative 63 over 122 does not reduce, but the 128, the 28 over that one does. And all I did was type in the fraction and then it automatically reduces it for you. But when I typed in these two fractions, it popped up the exact same thing. So I knew they did not reduce. So W2 is going to be U minus W1. So that means I'm gonna have two, negative one, negative three minus all of these fractions. And we shall use the calculator for sure because it's lots of decimals, right? So two minus 
35 over 122. I get 209 over 122. Negative 1 minus a negative 63 over 122. I get negative 59 over 122. Then negative 3 minus 14 over 61. I get negative 197 over 61. And this thing does reduce them for me and everything. Okay, so I am using the calculator here a lot, just because there's lots of fractions and whatnot. Okay, let's see. The first one was the projection. So that's, I need a fraction 35 over 122. Another fraction. Negative 63 over 122, comma, and another fraction. Okay, now here I need a vector, but then I need to go and put in some fractions. Comma, another fraction. Uh, and the last fraction. Okay. Now, finally, we get to the last problem. So it says a 4,800 pound truck is parked on a 10 degree slope. See the figure here. So it's a slope, it's 10 degrees. Um, assume the only force to overcome is that due to gravity. Find the force required to keep the truck from rolling down the hill and the force perpendicular to the hill. Okay, round your answers to one decimal place. So essentially what this means is that you do have this weight. So this vector going down represents the weight. Weight already has gravity factored into it, okay? So all I need to know is what direction this is going in. And if you're looking at a um, three-dimensional space, you have left, um, well, you would have this way and then this way, and then going back toward that greenery and then going forward toward you, and then you would have up and down. Now in that three-dimensional space, up is a positive Z value and down is a negative Z value, okay? So when they talk about weight on this problem, they are giving us the gravitation um, force already. So for number 12, I know that the force, the gravitational force is going to be um, a negative 4,800 or 48,000, sorry, in the J component. Another way of writing this in component form is there's no force going, there's nothing pushing the truck forward, backward, or to the sides to its sides, okay? So if I write it in component form, it looks like this, okay? Now, I notice that the book likes to write F, but you can also label it as U just to stay consistent with the projection of U onto V and all of that. Essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to um, transpose it or project it onto the actual road. Okay, now what direction it ends up with all depends. I don't know if it's going to end up with the arrow going downward or if the arrow is going to go upward. Um, I'm assuming that the arrow is going to go upward because we're trying to prevent it from rolling down. Okay, but we definitely need to find that projection of this vector onto the road. Okay, once we know that, then we can go ahead and figure out what's going on um, in the perpendicular. Okay, um, because these two lines are perpendicular here. So that basically what we're going to do, and if they want to find the amount of force that's required, essentially what I'm going to be doing is taking the magnitude of these two things, okay? Um, so, and if you take the magnitude of this one, you do get that the, uh, the force here is going to be um, a positive 48 because you would get a positive something squared here and then when you take the square root of it you'll end up with a positive 48,000. Okay 
Moving on, so let's try part A. For part A, essentially what they're asking you for is W1, the projection of um, this force vector or this U vector onto um, V. But what the heck is V, right? We still haven't figured out what V is. V is the vector that is along the truck, okay? So we want this vector to be projected onto that road, okay? So we need to find the vector representation for the road. Um, and that can easily be found by using that angle. So the first component would be the cosine of this angle. And then the second component would be the sine of this angle. Now, I don't know what, if there's a multiplier in the front, uh, we just don't know what that multiplier would be. So we're not going to use any multipliers in front of the cosine in front of the sine. So let's go ahead and continue with what we have here. So if I wanna find the projection of, um, projection of U onto V, I basically need to find the dot product of U dot V over the dot product of V and then times V. Right, oops, I'm writing component form, but I don't need to. Again, you cannot cancel any of these Vs, so don't try. So the dot product, zero times that is zero. Zero times sine is zero. Oops, I forgot one extra thing. Um, I am in two dimensional space, so I do not need to use I. I'm only gonna use two-dimensional space because I'm thinking to myself look this is two dimensions this is three dimensions there's a discrepancy here right um what I need to do is take for granted that this is a two-dimensional figure and not a three-dimensional figure okay so the only directions I have are basically left right and up and down okay and so for that left and right would be the x component or the i component and then up and down would be the j component or the um, y component. So I do have the right variable here, but when I write that in its component form, it should only have two dimensions. It would have to be k in order for it to be the third dimension, right? I think I mentioned that in the previous problem. And I confused myself. Well, it's a good thing I recognize before I keep going, right? You definitely don't wanna keep going with all the wrong information. Okay, so my bad, I apologize, um, but it should only be in two dimensions, okay? Eventually, you might start seeing things in three dimensions. It does get a little bit more complicated to visualize, um, but for right now, we're just working with two dimensions, okay? We're doing up, down, left, and right. So now I can do my projection because I would do zero times the cosine, and then here I would do negative 4,800 or 1,000 times the sine of 10 degrees. And then over V with itself, so that would be cosine squared of 10 degrees plus sine squared of 10 degrees. And then all of that would be getting multiplied by the V vector. And so we will figure out essentially what that number is that goes in front of it. Okay. So let's see, um, I am gonna end up with negative, negative 48,000 times sine of 10 degrees. On the bottom, it doesn't matter what the angle is, if it's the same angle, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Um, and then I'm going to multiply that in. So I'm going to get negative 48,000 sine of 10 degrees, cosine of 10 degrees. And for the second component, I get negative 48,000 sine squared of 10 degrees. Okay. Now, if I want to know what the force is to keep that. So now that I know what it is, it looks like it's going down and left. So if it's going downward and left, it's actually going in this direction toward the um, vertex of this um, angle here, okay? 
So I am going in this direction, which makes sense. The car would naturally go in that direction. I basically want to know how much force I would need to put in the opposite direction to keep it from going down that hill. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out what that uh, measurement is. So I'm going to find the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude is the square root of this thing squared plus this component squared. And so what do I end up with? Um, I'm going to end up with 4,800 squared on both of these. And a negative times a negative will be a positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that 48,000 squared from both of those two terms. And so what I'm going to end up with is sine squared 10 degrees, cosine squared 10 degrees, plus, and if I square square, I'm going to get sine of fourth power 10 degrees. Um, and I don't know what 48,000 squared is, but it's a huge number and I don't want to write that huge number out right now. Okay, I am going to factor out a sine squared. So I get cosine squared of 10 degrees plus sine squared of 10 degrees. This will come out to be a one. So essentially I end up with 48,000 squared times sine squared of 10 degrees which does come out to 48,000 sine of 10 degrees. Now, if they want the exact answer, you know, this is it. But if they want you to round it, and they do say to round to one decimal place, so it's going to be 48,000 times sine of 10 degrees. And I do need to make sure my calculator is in degree mode to do this. There we go. I get 8335.1. Okay, so that's the amount of force. That's how many pounds um, need to be applied. Makes sense. I mean, if this whole thing is 48,000 pounds, it's going to take some good amount of force to prevent it from rolling down. Okay, now it says find the force that's perpendicular to the hill. So that means they want to know what's going on down here. The fastest way to figure that one out, and remember this one is orthogonal. Um, W2 is orthogonal to both U and V. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna find out what U minus W1 is, and then we'll compute its magnitude. So U was this, and W1, was this thing. Okay, and tried to squish it in there. <laughs> it's very, very long, so I tried to like smush it all in. So let's see, zero minus a negative is gonna become positive 48,000 sine of 10 degrees, cosine of 10 degrees, and then negative 48 minus a negative going to become positive. So this would be 48,000 plus 48,000 sine squared of 10 degrees. Now, before I find the magnitude, um, I know we're fine. We can go ahead and find the magnitude. So we get the square root of this guy squared plus the square root of this thing squared. So I am actually, since this 48,000 is going to get squared, and then it's going to also get squared, I could factor it out, but it would still get squared. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the 48,000 squared from all the terms, okay? And so what does that do? It leaves me with sine of 10 degrees, cosine of 10 degrees, still needing to be squared. And if this 48,000 came out, but it still needed to be squared, 
I would still have one plus sine squared of 10 degrees squared. And if you need to see this a little bit more elaborately, it's like as if I am inside this parentheses and I'm factoring out the 48,000, I get one plus sine squared 10 degrees, and then I'm squaring each factor individually. So it becomes 48,000 squared and then this thing squared. And so what I did was I took, and same thing here, this can be written as 48,000 squared times sine 10 degrees, cosine 10 degrees squared. And so from this term and this term, I'm factoring out that 48, and I end up with this parenthesis squared plus this parenthesis squared, this plus being that plus, okay? Just in case you were confused on how I factored that, okay? Um, but going on, this is going to be sine squared 10, um, not plus, cosine squared 10 degrees plus, and when I square this, I'm going to get 1 plus 2 sine squared 10 degrees plus sine to the fourth of 10 degrees. And let's see, I think I can factor... I think I want to do the same thing that I did in the previous problem with those two factors. So I am going to have 48,000 squared, and I'm going to put the one and the two sine squared 10 degrees in the front. And so for the back two terms, I'm going to factor out a sine squared, and I end up with cosine squared plus the extra sine squared. And so this does turn out to be one. So I end up with 48,000 squared, one plus two sine squared 10 degrees, plus another sine squared 10 degrees, which actually makes three, right? One plus three sine squared 10 degrees. Okay. And then that would mean, I would just type that whole thing in my calculator. So let's see, what do we get? Square root 48, one, two, three squared times one plus three um, parentheses sine of 10 degrees, but I wanna square that so that I can get this and then close that parentheses. So let's make sure, yep, yep, yep. I got all my parentheses closed. Now I can hit enter and we get about 50124.1. Okay. So 50124.1. And that is it for this assignment. So we do um, we have finished. I'm going to stop our video here and you guys um oh uh oh I got this one wrong let me go see if I got any other ones wrong that one was pretty long so let's see number three was I think one that I didn't finish yeah I never entered number three and number six hmm oh it's because I changed the problem so of course the answers are not going to be the same for number six remember I said these were in black not in red See, when they're in red, that means each student will get a different value. But when it's in black here, that value is going to stay the same for everyone. So I didn't want to do this problem because then um, you would already basically have the answers and wouldn't have wouldn't need to do it your own. OK, um, what I am having a problem with is I probably messed up somewhere in my factoring because the first problem was completely correct. Um, it's the second part that went wrong. So let me see if I can find my error. And this is a great um, moment, actually, you know, it, you know, of course, things are not perfect, it might seem a little bit off, right. 
but taking the opportunity to show something or learn something extra is super important okay and not always are you guys going to be getting all the questions correct the first time around right so it helps instead of erasing everything to try to go back and find out where your error was or is okay and so that's what i'm going to do right now you can follow with me but i'm going to carefully figure out what happened okay so i do know that the formula does tell me i need u minus w okay um apparently my phone fell um i do need to do u minus w so i did take u and u was at the very beginning which was um they call it f but I just relabeled it U because the projection uses U instead of F, okay? So I did take U minus what I got for W1. And this was what I got for W1, okay? So I did type all of that in there and I did type that in there correctly. And so when I did my subtraction, I did zero minus this. And so it will turn into a plus. And so I do have the positive. And then this, a negative and a negative would also make a plus. Ah, that's where I made my mistake. This first number should be negative. That makes a little bit of a difference, not too much. So I do not have to erase everything, okay? So there was my mistake. So that means when I factored out that 4,800, this should have been negative, this should have been negative, which means this guy should have been negative. Um, so then when I squared everybody, it will turn out back to positive when I square the negative one, but then this term in the middle should be a negative, okay? Um, and if you need to see that worked out, remember it's negative one plus sine squared of 10 degrees times itself. So negative and a negative is positive one, those multiplied together give me that these multiplied together give me this and then the last two multiplied together give me sine of the fourth power of 10 degrees which is exactly where i got these two right these two combine to give me negative two okay so i don't write all that stuff in the pink i kind of after practice you know what i mean you get it down um but what that does mean is that right here there should be a minus sign and right here, there should be a minus sign. And then negative two plus one is actually gonna give me a minus one, not minus three of these things. Okay. So that is going to change this final value. And I do not need to retype everything in my calculator. I just need to change um, the plus three to a minus one. So I'm going to get rid of um, minus and get rid of this three. There we go. And I do need to square that sign of 10 degrees. So yes, now it's entered in there correctly and I can hit enter and I get 47270.8. So let's try that one now. Hopefully that fixes it. Oops, 0 0.8. Let's submit and see if that corrects it. Yep, that fixed it. Okay, yeah. So be very careful with your signs. One little tiny thing, right, can throw the whole thing off. But I, people will get real frustrated with it and erase everything and start all over again. Chances are when you do that, you're probably gonna make the same mistake again. Um, so it helps if you just try to go through it very slowly and try to find the error where it was, okay? And then too, once you find that error, you've made a mental log like don't do that again right and so it can prevent that same error from happening in the future um but that is it now for this video i hope this helps while working through the homework um and if always as always if you have any questions as you're working through the homework this isn't particularly helping you or you don't understand what i'm doing here 
please, please, please text me. I can elaborate, I can explain more or better, um, but I can try my best to make sure that it connects and resonates with you, okay? Um, but other than that, you guys have a great day and good luck on 11.3.